Hi friends! Today is going to be the tarot and books video. In today's video we will be talking about tarot and books. Basically what I'm going to be doing is pulling a tarot card from one of my multiple decks of tarot cards and recommending a book to you based off of the topic and or meaning of that card. One of the first things we should talk about is the decks that I have that I know where they are because I have a lot of them that are who knows where. So I have your basic Reader weight deck, which is what most people who do tarot are familiar with. Um, this is like the original, just like basic illustrations, nothing fancy. It's 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 pretty normal. What I will probably be using instead of that deck is my starter deck because I've had this for two decades, and it actually has the meaning on the deck instead of me having to like try to remember off the top of my head. Despite the fact that I have been doing tarot cards for like two decades. Uh, it's been on and off for two decades, as all things are when you're me and a Gemini and your um, hobbies swish a lot. It, it's been a while since I've picked up tarot cards, probably a year or two, so my brain's not fresh. So I probably will be using my starter deck that actually has the meanings on them, just to save us all some headache. I also have these fortune telling cards, which I will not say the name of because they are like from the 1970s and include a racial slur on them. Uh, despite that fact, I have found these to be extremely accurate. It is a different way of um, telling the few, like there's different spreads for these um, that I have found to be very accurate over the years. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite decks to use. Um, I wish I could find another one like it that didn't have that name in the title, but here we are. Um, so these are just very pretty, like a witch on the back. Um, and the fronts of them have, they have both a regular style card on it and usually like a little picture and also the meaning of what the card is. Um, we'll probably pull a couple of these. And then also out of my stash, I pulled out these Vintage Wisdom Oracle cards. Um, by Victoria Mosley. So these are technically oracle cards, not tarot cards. It's a different thing. Basically it's just they have different uh, styles of cards. They don't have the um, like major and minor arcana on them but they are but they are absolutely stunning and I just love them. So um, these we might use. Awesome this one this one this one gets me every time just gorgeous the artwork on these is fan fucking tastic um so yeah probably pull a couple of these um pull a couple of tarot pull a couple of the fortune telling cards pull a couple of the oracle cards and uh see what books i can recommend to y'all so i'm gonna start with just the typical Raider weight deck and I'm gonna shuffle them and just pull three. Um, probably what I'll do to save both me and you some time is pull three of each and then cut the video and then come back tell you the card the meaning of the card and the book I picked for it. Um, otherwise this might take like forever and kill the battery um, and we don't want to do that because we have lots of videos to film today. <laughs> Um, let's see, we are going to pull, so we're going to pull three, let's do this underneath and do one, cut again, two, cut again, three. Um, so from that we pulled the Knight of Cups the moon and the eight of swords inversed so that should be fun let's go with our fortune telling cards now like i said this is like my most used deck that's why i have two of them because i used these for a long time um in my late teens and my early 20s and my deck got kind of beat up and i purchased a new one 
probably 10 or so years ago. Probably not quite that long. Probably like in the eight years ago range, but I purchased a new deck because these ones, which I'm using the old ones right now, because these are the ones that typically work for me better, um, which is the case with some cards of decks, decks of cards rather. Some work for you and some don't. Um, just, it's a it's a thing. Uh, so let's pull three of these guys. We will cut and we will pull one and cut and pull two and cut and pull three. The reason why I don't use these ones when I am pulling for an actual reading is because some of them do have tears in them. So like I know which cards have tears, but for this purpose it doesn't matter. We got the dog, children, and then our third card is the lion. Now we're gonna pull from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle. These are difficult to shuffle because they are quite large, but uh, you know, you just do your best. You just do what you can do. I actually haven't used these very often. I would like to say I haven't had them for very long. Um, I've had them since 2019 and if uh, I, I haven't, I mean, I haven't like had friends over to do readings since then. So I haven't used these very much, but I actually bought them at like a, like a flea market in 2019 in Florida, no less. One and another cut. and three. And we pulled thought, abundance, and intuition. So I'm going to go pull some books for all these cards and then come back here and recommend some books to you. I have returned with book recommendations. It took way longer than I was expecting, but here we are. So we're going to start with the Oracle cards because those ones have the weirdest, weirdest things. Anyway, thought. Basically, this the meaning of this card is that um, thought is a powerful spiritual vibration that can be used to generate atmospheres of healing or harmfulness depending on the evolution of the thinker. The presence of this card highlights the importance of your thoughts as they precede action and are the driving force behind how you experience life. Essentially, it's like the way that you think about things is how you perceive life and then that therefore affects your life. So power of positive thinking. For that I chose Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade. The tagline of this book is uh, for men to rise heroes must fall. There's also one that says not all stories have happy endings. This book follows at the very beginning our two main characters Aslo and Matthias. And Matthias is this character that everybody loves. He's like super friendly. Everybody thinks that he's like super cute. And he is this profited uh, hero. He essentially is the person who is supposed to save the world. Whereas Aslo is a woodsman. He never has really wanted to leave home. He's very happy in his seclusion and just ha being friends with Matthias and that's it. And at the very beginning of the book, not a spoiler because it's part of the synopsis of the book, the very beginning of the book, uh, the boys are setting out on this journey for Matthias to go to save the world and Matthias is killed like immediately and Aslo has to make the decision of whether he wants to head back home and live the life that he has always lived or if he wants to take up the mantle that Matthias will no longer be able to do and try to save the world even though he is left out of all prophecy. There is no prophecy for him but because Matthias cannot save the world. Aslo's like, well, he's my best friend. Should I take up what he was going to do? So this book follows Aslo making decisions um, about the future of the entire world and how he uses his way of thinking to kind of influence that. I will say some people love this book. Some people absolutely hate it. I loved it. The end is crazy fucking wackadoo and I think that's part of the reason. I, like it's so absurd. I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Um, but most people that I know did not enjoy this. But as always, reviews for all of these books will be linked down below. Next we have Intuition. 
the intuition card is simply about looking within yourself in order to find the answers to the questions that you have. So if you, you know, need to figure out if we're talking books, how to save the world, then, you know, look within yourself to try to find the answer for what will help you do that. Seen through the quiet lens of meditation, intuition can lead you to your own knowing. For that, I chose The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This book follows Dekka who lives in a world where oh, I, I believe it's on a girl's 16th birthday she goes through the ceremony where they draw their blood and essentially if you have red blood you're just considered totally normal you get to go on live your life somebody's probably going to propose that day um you're going to be sold off into a marriage essentially if you are shown to be have gold blood you are considered an outcast and most are often killed immediately the book starts off with Decca going to the ceremony and when someone pricks her blood it's gold blood and at that same time these monsters attack her home village that have been attacking other villages as well and then everyone thinks that because she like was this gold-blooded person and it came at the same time that she brought these monsters to them and that she was trying to kill the people so that she could get away they lock her in a cage they try to kill her they can't kill her someone comes from the kingdom and the king decides that he's going to round up these gold-blooded women to use them against the monsters. And this book follows Decca kind of coming into her own magic, her own world, learning things about herself and about those around her and making friends in this world that is typically very unfriendly and also learning some things about the monsters along the way. And as I have said, one of, it's on the back of the book. It's one of my favorite things. It's are we girls or are we demons? Are we going to die or are we going to survive? Are we girls or are we demons? If we're demons, let's act like it. Like that is kind of the main theme of this book is they think we're demons. Let's show them a demon. And I definitely think that that is something that Decca has reflected on her inner self to come to that conclusion. So... And the last of our oracle cards is abundance. Abundance is about learning to accept the things that you have in your life that are good for you rather than being very ho-hum about your life and and wishing for more things always. Um, it's very much about realizing the good that you already have rather than looking at what other people have and comparing yourself to that. So for that I chose Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. This was a recent read for me. It's not one that I love but it fits this card perfectly because our main character Prudence is definitely an overachiever. She's very type A. She is a perfectionist and she is a very hard to please character and she also thinks that she always needs more. She needs higher grades. She needs better this. She needs better that and she doesn't really see the good things around her in her life like her family and her friends and even there are the things in nature that are around her the animal preserve that is nearby to her that she doesn't even know is there um she definitely looks more towards all of the things that she needs to have in the future versus focusing on what she has now and appreciating that we're now going to go to our reader weight deck we're going to start with our knight of cups an invitation or opportunity may soon arise, arrival, approach, advancement, attraction, inducement, appeal, request, challenge, proposal, proposition. For that I chose Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. I think this uh, it definitely is like uh, an opportunity arises. This book starts out with Darcy who runs this kind of like a Dear Abby column out of a locker, an empty locker at her school. The kids put in like a question or like a relationship problem that they have with some money into the locker and their email address and then Darcy anonymously will give them an answer to their problem um, via email. And Darcy gets caught doing this by Brougham who is a guy at her school who's trying to win back his ex-girlfriend. And when Brougham catches Darcy doing this he's like I will pay you X amount of dollars for you to help me win back my ex-girlfriend. And so they make this, he makes a proposition, they make a, an agreement to, for him, to, for her to help him. And there's a lot of other things going on in the background, but essentially there are definitely some problems, there's some challenges, and it's a really cute story overall. Our next card is the moon. 
The moon is deception, obscurity, trickery, dishonesty, danger, error, bad influence, insecurity, false friends, deceit, double dealing, being taken advantage of, and caution. This was one of the easiest ones to pick right off the bat. I went with House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This book follows three sisters, Iris, Grey, and Vivi. They, when they were younger children, went missing for, I think, three months, six months. I've read so many books with disappeared children lately that I can't remember the exact amount of time, but it was an extended period of time. The girls went missing. Um, no one really knew what happened. Their parents were there with them and they just like vanished out of thin air and then eventually reappear naked, dirty, no recollection of their past and they return back to their everyday normal sign and kind of sort of lives. And the book takes place when Iris, who is the youngest sister, is still in high school. Vivi and Grey have both left home. They didn't really get along with their parents. And so it's just Iris at home. Their father has since died. So it's Iris and their mother at home. And lo and behold, Vivi rolls into town and Grey is missing. And the girls have to come together to figure out what happened to them in the past to try to figure out what has happened in the present because they don't know what has happened to Grey. And these girls are very weird, creepy. This book has some body horror in it, um, just so you know that that's there. But it definitely is deceitful and dark and all of the things that the moon card represents. Next was our Eight of Swords reversed. For that we have treachery in the past, difficulty, hard work, depressed state of mind, disquiet, accident, and fatality. For that I chose The Dry by Jane Harper. This one might be a little bit of a stretch. This book follows Aaron Falk who is, I think he works with like the Australian version of the FBI. He does money forensics so he tracks money when people are being bad. And he is called back to his hometown that he grew up in when his childhood best friend is killed and murdered as along with his wife and one of their children. Which stating that this book has some really gruesome depictions of death, especially with a child. So know that going in. Aaron's best friend Luke's father is the one who, you know, tells Aaron that he needs to come back home. He says something happened when you guys were kids. You both lied about it. I want to talk about it. You need to come back home. So when the boys were younger, one of their best friends was found dead in a creek. And Aaron is the one who was blamed for that, but there was never any proof. So um, basically him and his father were chased out of town. Him and his father had a terrible relationship with one another afterwards because he feels like his father always you know, thought that he was guilty, but he knows that he's not guilty, though he is a little bit of an unreliable narrator on that aspect. And so this book follows him dealing with both the issues of the past and trying to figure out what actually happened in the past as well as what has happened in the present day. Um, very twisty, very, some very dark parts. Again, it does deal with death of a child and the actual description of their manner of death, which is not pretty. Um, so make sure you know that going in, but a good book overall. If you pick up anything by Jane Harper, there, usually pretty good. Our next card is children, which essentially just means a significantly friendly disposition or gentleness. For that I picked Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. This book follows Kamani, who is a an healer apprentice of her father's. And essentially in the world that she lives in, when the emperor slash king slash whoever the guy is, is it an emperor? It's a royal family. Let's go with that. Okay. So when the emperor dies, they choose three women to be his grave maidens, which are essentially young women who are buried with him in the afterlife. They're alive when this starts out. Okay. So Kamani's younger sister is actually chosen as one of the grave maidens, but her father is sent to the palace to help heal the emperor. Well, he goes there to try to help heal the emperor. And Kamani learns that on his journey there, he is actually killed. So Kamani decides to find her way into the kingdom to try to figure out what is happening with the emperor and discovers that he's actually being poisoned. And so it's her position to try to figure out what is happening to try to help him to heal him so that he doesn't die so that her sister doesn't get locked into a tomb and have to die with him. And it's very political. But Kamani is definitely a very 
kind person and throughout this duology she struggles with the fact that she is a healer and they are in a war and how does she reconcile those two aspects of herself can she take a life when her whole purpose is to protect and save lives and so I felt like that was a really good book for that specific card I do highly recommend this series it is fantastic our next card is the dog which is essentially represents true friendship there's more words than that but that's what we're going with uh true friendship there was nothing that I could think of more quickly uh than Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and our titular character Evelyn Hugo and one of her many husbands Harry Cameron you've you're on booktube so you've probably heard of this book before but essentially this book follows Evelyn Hugo who is a little bit based off of Elizabeth Taylor in real life so this book starts off in present day and our one of our main characters kind of sort of Monique is a woman who works at a newspaper um, or a magazine I'm not sure which I think it's a newspaper and she is invited to the home of Evelyn Hugo who was the starlet in the 50s and 60s and she wants to tell Monique her story she wants to tell Monique the story of all of her husbands and her life and she's been very reclusive and very secretive about her life up to this point but as Evelyn mentions to Monique during the story there's really no one left alive that anything of any of her secrets can hurt. Um, her husbands have all since passed. She's outlived all of her husbands. Um, her daughter has passed. Um, she's very, very up in age at this point. So she's very elderly. Everyone that her um, stories could have hurt has passed on. And so we get the story of Evelyn uh, coming from, I believe, New York. Um, having a very Hispanic style name and Hollywood uh, making her change her name so that she could be more popular in books or in movies in books in movies and meeting Harry Cameron um, who is I believe a director at the beginning. The book follows her and Harry through their different parts of their relationship and it always is a friendship despite the fact that he is one of her husbands and I won't talk about that because that's kind of like a spoiler for the book but uh, definitely their friendship I think is one of the most loving that I have seen in a contemporary novel of all time so I love this book it's one of my favorites of all time it's just beautifully done and will absolutely crush your soul so be prepared for that and next is the lion which is also our last pick so the lion basically foretells a sudden shock from bad news. This is also the very first book that I picked and also the quickest pick, one of the quickest picks. Um, I went with If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. This book follows seven students in college. They are studying drama, Shakespeare, that kind of thing. Um, they are all like the head of this program where they're you know like cast for these lead parts and essentially what happens is at some point in the past one of them dies and this story both tells what happened in the past to the death of that person to our main character Oliver who was one of the seven students he was the one who was blamed for this murder and he is like talking to the detective about what actually happened leading up to it. So you're getting both the story from his perspective in present day, but leading back to the past to get the story of the past. It's very shady, dark, twisty. It's very dark academia. But the end, the very end is what gets like that big shock. Um, Oliver gets a shock that he was not expecting. And it destroys him. And I highly recommend this book. I do really love it. Um, I am not a huge Shakespeare fan. Uh, if you have not been here before, you probably don't know that. But if you have been, you know. Um, I struggle with Shakespeare, a lot of Shakespeare, though my favorite movie of all time is 10 Things I Hate About You. So that's a whole other issue. But uh, Shakespeare in general, like I don't understand a lot of the wordage. 
but themes I can usually get behind. Not in the case of Romeo and Juliet, but in most cases I can get behind. Um, so I wasn't sure if I would enjoy this because most of the people that I hear talk about this like rave about how much they love Shakespeare. So this book really hits with them. I'm not a huge Shakespeare fan and this book really hit with me as well. So if you like like mystery thriller type books that also is a very introspective look at seven different humans and how their personalities can clash and interact, recommend. So that was the books and tarot video. Um, this was me recommending nine books off of my shelves to you based off of tarot, fortune telling, and oracle cards. I don't know that I would treat this as a tag video because it's not really a tag video, but um, if you are inspired to do your own version of this, I would love to see it. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you have like a specific video idea of doing something like this. Because again, it's fun to like see what people's interpretations of different cards are um, because you can interpret cards differently um, and interpret them based off of like in what order they're drawn or based off of their proximity to other things. There's like a whole thing. It's, it's, it's an art form in itself. So again, it's something that I've been doing for two decades and still struggle with on the daily. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!